got an umbrella to make me feel a little better. Right. Let me let me tell you what. Let me let me, let me lay the six on the table. We will at some point, at some point, be talking about Fry and Plantain by Zalika Reed Benta. But we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna come back to that. So today. Yeah, girl, welcome back to my channel. It's Sylvie, AKA Frizzy. And today is a bittersweet day. I'm just, I feel like at this point, we're just, we're people. I've got my whistle, I've got my flag. I've got some Niseko. I've got an umbrella to make me feel a little better. Right, let me, let me tell you what, let me, let me, let me lay the six on the table. We will at some point, at some point, be talking about Fry and Plantain by Zalika Reed Benta. But we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna come back to that. So today, 2021, bank holiday weekend. Bank holiday weekend is usually Notting Hill Carnival. It happens every year. So the last Sunday and Monday of August in London, Labbrook Grove, every year has happened way before I came into the world. The carnival concept was brought in by people from the Caribbean who would come and in their respective islands they do carnival. Trinidad has um, a massive carnival. Brazil also have their own, but Trinidad has, their stuff is off the charts. I think even Barbados and Jamaica have carnivals as well that they do, but it's hype. And little old me Londoner, I grew accustomed to it. Every year I went to carnival with my dad. I'd be, I, I remember from the youngest points of my life being a little picnic on, on my dad's shoulders and I'd be grabbing onto his dreadlocks and we'd just be vibes in. He was like a proper old school Bobali man, so I'd just be there, just jamming. And pretty much every year since I was about 13 when I started going by myself, I've been carnival every year since, and I'm pretty sure that's like 15 plus years. So, excuse me if I, Drown, drown my sorrows. I'm not mad at this. I start with Notting Hill Carnival. One year, I joined the float. One year, for two days. I couldn't feel my feet for seven days after that. But it was lit, genuinely. You have to experience Notting Hill Carnival with a float. At least once in your life, you have to. It's a whole different experience. And once you're, when you're with a float, you compete in like a dance competition when you get to a certain point. So you follow the route and then we all learn a dance routine. And it was banging, it was banging. I absolutely love that. What else have I done? That day, there was this old man that had Ray Nephew. Ray Nephew is, straight vodka, rum. I want to say overproof. The, the percentage is just mind boggling. You ain't got a business drinking that basically. But the man basically gave us a sip. I think it was to warm us up. And he said, you need a sip. And I said to the man, I'll never forget. I was about 15, 16. I said, I've had this before I drink alcohol. He gave me a bit, so I gulped it back. So I was like, I don't want to sip, like, give it to me properly. I backed it. Have you guys seen four? You know when he takes his hammer? So I backed it, yeah? I'm up, so I'm like, I backed it. I swear to God, I went, I dropped on the floor, bro. I said, 
No, I didn't say anything because I couldn't speak for like two minutes. I think I was drunk that whole day. I've had carnivals where it's been raining. I've put on my Wellingtons, I've put on my rain jacket and I've gone to a party and gyrate my hips and waist on street corner. I've just, carnivals just, <coughs> I don't know how people be drinking champagne all the time, I can't. Oh. It's like it goes through my nose and just it's like a choo choo and my nose explodes. Carnival's just, Carnival has genuinely brought me some of the best choice of my life. Listen, I have moved holidays around. I have short on holidays to say, yo, yo, blood I'll be up for Carnival. So I'm feeling it quite now, I am. And there are loads of different things that people are doing for Carnival, but it's not the same. I'm pretty sure over two million people attend Carnival in that space of those two days. Carnival is genuinely popping. And when I'm talking about Carnival, so, soca music, sound systems, just Carnival is, oh, it's magical. It is, I, I would argue very much that Carnival now is a staple piece of at this point, Black Grace celebration and Zalika. Zalika got me through. Zalika got me through. You know, usually I'm gonna give you a whole bag of details, but can we just say an all purpose seasoned book was sent my way? Firstly, it wasn't even sent my way because I bought it a while back and just left it on my bookcase, which is mad. To the point that I didn't even know what the book was about. I couldn't tell you before it was if it was non-fiction, fiction, fantasy. I didn't know anything about the book. But I really like Plantain. So you're gonna name a book for Ryan Plantain. I'ma buy it. And then the cover just the cover just gasses me. Just <laughs> It's just banging. Right now we have no apologies, no apologies for my behavior. Mm -hmm. She said she wanted was one word from me. All she said she needed was a little bit of my time. And she never expected to get so addicted to my wine, she said. Right, so Fry and Plantain is a fiction book. But the way that it's told, it's so relatable that you could definitely see it being non-fiction because it could be any second generation person's story. So it's set in Canada. And I very much think it's the sort of area that houses a lot of people that came from the Caribbean. The exact place is called, that they call it, it's set in Little Jamaica, Toronto's Eglinton West neighborhood. And it follows the main character, Cara Davis, from elementary school, as they call it. We don't have elementary school in the UK. We have primary school. So I'm thinking it's about-ish, maybe the same. So I'm gonna say that following her from she's about nine, 10 to first year of uni. So when, until she's about 19 years old. And it's told in short stories. There's about, Am I right? It's in about seven short stories. Is it seven? And each of the stories, generally, except for maybe like the last one or two, are about 20 ish pages each. So it's a nice, it's a nice amount for you to get into it. I was going to say, but when it ends, you're not, you don't want more. No, there are, I definitely think that there was, there was some stories i was like girl i i ain't finished this story yet <laughs> i need some more so but the way that it's been written it's just oh okay so cara davis she's the daughter so we're looking at we're looking at the relationship between her and her mum so cara's mum had her at 17 she's a single mum and then also you've got cara's grandmother 
who is from Jamaica, born and raised in Jamaica. She has a house, a bungalow, a cute little bungalow in Toronto. And then Cara's mum's out there trying to study in and trying to make ends meet for her and her daughter. And like Cara's mum and her grandma are always beefing. There's, there's a, uh, the friction's a bit mad. But also Cara's grandma is beefing her granddad. And the maddest thing, I don't know if anyone can relate to having mad stories. I know for one, my grandparents split up. Both came from the motherland to England and they split up. And the relationship just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit leave it. It's a little bit leave it. You know when you you would say to your mum a bit more openly, like, wow, like this is mad, this is a relationship. But then there's added depth to your grandparents' relationship where you just think, Yo, this is messy. And it's more messy than the fact that grandma's giving me a little 20, that granddad gives me a little 20 pound every Christmas. Like there's, there's politics, there's politics. I always took my grandma's side though. I go, ah, I gotta let you know that. I was repping for my grandma. But the politics, and then there were politics, like I said, between Cara's mum and the grandma. And also it always trickles down, and this book really hit on it. It trickled down into how Cara's mum raised her. My battery about to die, die. Gotta charge her up because she gonna die. And I'm gonna cry. Who the hell is Kim? What foolishness you talking? You better check yourself and go and check your health. Better call up for a ride to pick up your things outside. Outside, outside, dun, dun, dun. Where was I? Yeah, my battery died. My battery died. No respect for the thing because we were chatting, we were in flow and the battery died. Do not put no respect on my name today? The government don't want to put respect on my name. The weather don't want to put respect on my name. And now my camera, battery don't want to put respect on my name. It's violence. Where was I? 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 I feel like a 90s R&B singer. <laughs> the stories. So the first story, it had to be the first story. You know, you think, you ever think, okay, how did, because it's not a full book that has a plot, some things can be put in different directions. So you think, why did you pick that story? Roll, the first story is called Pickhead. It had to be the first story. It was wild, wild. So, the first story is of Cara. It starts off with Cara back visiting Jamaica, I assume for the summer holidays. And her auntie tells her to go get a ting from the freezer. It's like a, a fizzy drink, it's a, it's a fizzy drink brand. So she, she goes to get it. Well, she, I think she gets on to get it from the fridge. It wasn't the fridge or the freezer, but she went to the wrong freezer, if it was a freezer. The freezer that she went to had a pig's head in it. Now, <laughs> some people are okay with them things. Yeah. My grandma tells me all the time about when she was growing up when she used to crick the chicken um, neck and dead up the chicken and pluck it and cook it. I don't, I can't tell you how, how relaxed I'm about that. But I can say that when I visit Tunisia regularly, when I walk past the butchers, there is the cow's heads. And I only walked into it once. <laughs> I was texting, you know, you text someone on the phone. You know, people tell you, like, don't text on your phone, it distracts you. You're like, nah, nah, nah. No, but it does. Because I was walking, 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 and I said, blood. And then you walked into the cow's head. That, that was stressful. But, but, the tea, the tea was when I went to a wedding. I went to someone's cousin's wedding and 
they were like, Sylvie, yalla, 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 come outside. I was like, whoa, wifey's got a gift. Hubby brought a gift. Like, I was gassed. Why do I come outside and see what is the gift? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the gift is a cow bleeding out on the in the reception in the yard on the towels and it's shackled and it's bleeding out and it's come it's it's convulsing a bit because it's stressed naturally and yeah 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 I remember I remember thinking I don't think I can eat this cow tomorrow or whenever it's cooked because I thought I haven't seen a cow on the floor bro and it was massive and also I was shook even though it was bound I said how about if my man gets one last dash of energy for his life and he says I'm gonna flee it I don't know, I, you hear about a fight or flight, maybe my man said actually now it's time to, to get a step in. So I was a bit nervous, but that cow, that beef that I ate the next day, was the best beef of my life and I knew where it came from. So yeah, Cara, Cara's Jinnah, Shalaya, because when she was out in Jamaica she was moving soft. And this is so funny because it's such a generational thing. So a lot of people will go back home during the holidays. And as much as you want to fit in with people, they, they call you, they call you foreign or there's, I feel like in every language and every nation, they've got a little nickname like for you. Like, shall I come foreign or that like, they will say, they, there's, there's vari variations of basically, she's not really one of us. Like she's here, but she ain't really, she's a little fragile. You gotta, you have to take time with how you deal with her. So yeah, they they came to realize that Carl was a little bit, a little bit sensitive. But when she went back to Canada, so she started with the story saying how she'd seen a pig get killed. And then the people were like, oh my God. So then she started getting more excited, telling them how she helped pick up the tool and she helped, the, I think, stab or kill up the pig. Then she got proper hype talking about how she helped skin the pig. Babes, they didn't. Babes, they, they didn't. But when she was telling the Jamaican people, they were just like, and? Nah. That's just normal, it's normal. So she ran out that story. And then <laughs> it was all funny jokes until she got caught out because the school teacher called the mother into the office to basically say that I think your child needs to see a psychologist because she's gloating about ducking off animals. <laughs> but Cara's mum, she was she stay, she was ready, she was ready for them. She said, ah, let me check you there. I like that. I, I like a mum who's got her ones and twos and she's on her P's and Q's. I mean, she, she was ready. But there was other there was other stories about Carla getting her first boyfriend. There was also a story that I really, really did not like. I liked the story because the way that it was written, I felt like I was really there. But I was so vexed with her friends because I said, hold on a second, how are you gonna treat your homegirl like that? Carver, them girls are not really your friends. No, I don't think they were, because that behavior is wicked. Let me remember the, what number story was it? I want you guys to read it, let me know, because that story really, really got me mad. Got me mad, got me mad. Where's the story? Where's the story? Where's the story? Snow day. Snow day. I was not impressed. I was really not impressed. It covers, honestly, it covers everything from talks about church, like I said, her having her first boyfriend, her getting the D for the first time, which she seemed to be quite unbothered about. But I mean, be what it is. And then also her going through different schools and how she adjusted and 
moving as well and how that affected her friendships with people from certain neighborhoods. I just, but I just love the book. I love it, I love it, I love it. And on a last, last, last note, I just loved learning about black identity in different countries. You, not you, I, I hear a lot about black identity in America, you know, for hundreds of years, they've had the African American community. I know what the experience is like in England being black British, but it was really nice to know another black generation's experience, identity in a majority white society. So I really liked learning about Canada, Toronto. Also, it's so pretty, it's so pretty. How can you not have it on your bookshelf? It's pretty, it's pretty. So guys, I'm going back to um, to listen to Soka and wine, my waist. My neighbors are doing very well today, bless them. Bless everyone. Except for the government, not the government who, who canceled my carnival, don't bless them. I think now's the time that I tell you, peace out.